For some reason, one of the world's most prolific manufacturers of hybrid vehicles has yet to produce a genuine effort at an electric car. The 2000 Honda Insight was America's very first hybrid, and it still holds the record to this day for internal combustion efficiency. And yet, we're only just now getting a look at the company's first long-range 50-state EV. Meet the 2024 Prologue. For more on the Honda Prologue, be sure to check the link in the description for our full debut post, and subscribe to the Inside EV's YouTube channel while you're up there. You can also find us on all of your favorite social media and interact with us there so that we can keep on bringing you content like this. Now, although the Prologue doesn't have the cutesy retro styling of the Forbidden Fruit Honda E, it still maintains that vehicle's clean forms and unadorned surfaces. But the first thing you notice when you approach the Prologue is its size and proportions. To be fair, it casts about the same shadow as Honda's internal combustion passport with an overall length of about 191 inches and an overall width of about 78 inches but its wheelbase is 121 inches, making it 10.1 units longer than the Passport, giving it a planted secure stance with very short front and rear overhangs. Now, if you're paying attention, the Prologue has the exact same wheelbase as the Chevrolet Blazer EV, and that's not a coincidence because this car rides on GM's Ultium platform. In spite of that similarity, the Prologue could not look more different from the edgy and aggressive blazer. Up front, for example, you get a very smooth design with a glossy black grille panel dovetailing beautifully into these nice wraparound LED headlights. You get a few other grille openings down below, but most interestingly, the Prologue gets an unusual little faux grille chamfer on the front bumper to kind of tie it in with Honda's other SUVs. There are also a few interesting aerodynamic tweaks, like these functional curtains in the front bumper that help guide air around the car, joined by these massive 21-inch wheels that furthermore reduce wind resistance as the car is cutting down the road. Speaking of these wheels, these are the largest ever offered on a Honda. The 21s will be standard on both the Touring and the Elite trims, while the base EX will get 19-inch wheels that should give it just a little bit better range. The Prologue's lower groove line and aggressive stance become more obvious as you move toward the rear of the vehicle. There are a few little cues that help tie it in with the rest of Honda's crossover lineup. For example, I kind of think that this quarter window looks just a little bit like the one on the CRV, but by and large, this vehicle stands alone among the company's other utilities. That's most obvious when you look at the rear end, which gets this big wide strip of taillight and gloss black that kind of echoes the look of the grille and headlights up front. It also gets the company's new Honda E word mark instead of the traditional H badge, which you will only find on the grille on this vehicle. Now, opinions on our staff are split as to whether or not the word mark looks good. Personally, I think that there's something kind of funky and retro and 1970s about it, and for that exact reason, other people on staff think that it looks dated. One thing's for sure though, there are tons of badges on the hatch itself, and my personal Prologue might have a date with dental floss as soon as I bought it. As a result of the Honda Prologue's long wheelbase, it has quite a bit more couple distance compared to the Passport. That's the space between the first and the second rows. And as you can see, I'm six feet tall and I have a decent amount of room, including up top, where this panoramic sunroof might otherwise encroach on headroom. And typical of Honda, there are some clever storage solutions in the Prologue, such as a cup holder that can accommodate a 32 ounce Nalgene and a floating center console with space underneath for little objects or handbags or pocketbooks or what have you. There's also quite a sizable center console and there's a slide in wireless device charger that's very similar to what you might find in the General Motors product. I wonder why that would be. Further on the tech front, every Honda Prologue trim will come standard with an 11-inch digital instrument cluster and an 11.3-inch touchscreen display with Google built in. That means you get Google Maps, the Play Store, Google Assistant, and more to help seamlessly merge your digital footprint with your asphalt footprint. The Prologue will also come standard with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto if you prefer to run things from your phone. Now, if you really wanted to complain about the interior experience, you might be able to find something in the rear seat. As comfortable as the front seats are, you do have a slight lack of headroom in back, especially if you're someone with a longer torso. Cargo space with the rear seats up also finds its way toward the back of the class with 25.2 cubic feet that comes up short on both the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Volkswagen ID4 by a couple of cubes. It's also about half the space that you'd find in the internal combustion Honda Passport. Every Prologue is gonna come with an 85 kilowatt hour battery, which should give the most efficient versions of this vehicle a Honda estimated range of about 300 miles. 
plan on the dual motor versions getting a little bit less, as well as versions with these 21 inch wheels. When it comes time to recharge, the Honda Prologue will accept 155 kilowatts of DC fast charging by way of its CCS combo port, a number that's not particularly impressive in this day and age, especially since the mechanically similar Chevrolet Blazer EV can do the deed with 190 kilowatts of DC fast charging. Furthermore, the Hyundai Ioniq 5 has a 225 kilowatt peak DC fast charging rate, which makes the Prologue's 20 to 80% charge time of 35 minutes just a little bit unimpressive. And I'm bummed that we had to wait this long for a number that unremarkable. Now, if you've been paying attention to the news, you know that Honda is one of the latest automakers to adopt the NACS Tesla charging standard, and the company will make an adapter available to Prologue owners at that time. The single motor Honda Prologue will be front wheel drive and dual motor versions will obviously be all wheel drive. Honda hasn't released full specs of the Prologue, but it did say that the dual motor all wheel drive version would have 288 horsepower and 333 pound feet of torque. Those numbers should give the Prologue perfectly acceptable performance for a family SUV. And because it's electric, you can also expect a pretty spry jump off the line. The Honda Prologue is expected to start deliveries in the beginning of 2024 with an estimated base price in the upper $40,000 range. Honda expects to sell between 30 and 45,000 examples of the Prologue in its first calendar year. And although the company wouldn't cop to a specific production location, representatives did say that they were confident that the Prologue should qualify for government incentives to bring that price down even further. And in spite of the shared dirty bits with some of General Motors' Ultium platform electric SUVs, Honda is confident that the Prologue will offer its buyers a specific driving experience thanks to unique suspension tuning, interior and exterior styling. And there should be plenty of safety on board as well with Honda Sensing coming standard. Although I can't say for certain until I actually get behind the wheel of the Prologue, it definitely seems like it might be a solid utility player in this segment with above average range ratings, but slightly below average charging performance. That and the Honda brand's stellar reputation could make it something to consider, at least until the company's own in-house EVs arrive before the end of the decade.